Okay, so I think it is time to start. Uh, we already waited the traditional five minutes. So let's uh, start. First of all, uh, welcome to this seminar number nine, in our sequence of seminars to discuss um, advanced research challenges for cyber physical systems. Uh, today we have uh, João Pedro Oliveira that will talk about evolving the Internet of Things towards a multidisciplinary cyber physical system. So first, as usual, he will make a presentation. And after his presentation, we will have a period for questions and also for discussion and maybe even presenting uh, alternative points of view. And this part of the discussion will be moderated by Rui Neves da Silva. So welcome all of you. And now I pass the, the floor to João Pedro. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Camarinha, and thank you for, uh, for, for the invitation and uh, for, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure for me to be here today and try to, to do as, uh, as much as possible the uh, 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 simplified um, presentation. Uh, I would like also I would like also to um, to thank everyone to be here today, and it's a, it's a, it's a pleasure for me, and it's always a good uh, a good thing to have uh, uh, audience. So the first thing I will do a, a very complicated thing. It's trying to share my screen. So uh, please uh, forgive me forgive me if I will do something wrong, and I will share. Okay, I hope that uh, everyone is uh, is seeing my slides. I think yes. so. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so um, the topic today it's uh, one perspective uh, of uh, the way that uh, how to evolve uh, the IoT uh, into a more complex system or more sophisticated system uh, called these, uh, known as the cyber physical ones. Um, oops. Okay. I have to, okay. So um, this is the, the short outline. So we'll firstly uh, view, uh, give an overview of this, uh, what is our concept of IoT and, and the evol evolution of CPS to CPS in a perspective, in this case, in this perspective from the, let's say the bottom, the bottom of the bottom layer at, at the hardware level, at the ship level. Um, after that, we will do a small example uh, for one project that we had in the past. And I'll show you also two or three examples uh, about uh, this, this subject. Um, in fact, in fact, it's, um, we nowadays, we really need a cyber physical system, sophisticated cyber, cyber physical systems. And if we look uh, if we could look at the numbers today, we have more than 66% of penetration rate of mobile phones, for instance, or more or roughly 60% of internet users. We are more than 7 billion people in, in, on earth. And all these systems to be uh, governed, we need to have uh, cyber, cyber physical system, advanced systems to, uh, in order to optimize all, uh, a, a lot of activities, uh, human activities, like say agriculture or industrial or transport, whatever. Um, in fact, if we look on the, the past, uh, we can observe the following. Um, in fact, we have one part of evolution. It was the interconnection of uh, PCs and servers in one way. Um, in the second part, we had the evolution of the mobile communications with the evolution of mobile phones and mobile communications. 
which has reached, as we saw, uh, penetration rates completely, uh, completely dr dramatic. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, and uh, for the last four uh, the last years, we are uh, assisting on the interconnection of uh, things. That's the the last the last uh, piece of the puzzle that we need to, we need to add. Um, and the there is a, something in my in my button. Um, so if we look on the provisions on the data that is being generated in the future, we can reach things like uh, one, more, more than 175 zettabytes of, uh, of data produced and transferred in the internet and, and in the world uh, by 2025. So this is a, a lot of data, a lot of, uh, of information that is exchanged and something also has to be done in order to, um, to pre-process the data and, and uh, the information and not uh, probably send all the data in raw format. So we need clever systems and these systems needs to be also clever at the edge. Okay, so at, 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 at at the edge uh, of of these the, of these systems, and uh, so it's not only the interconnection of things nowadays; it's also interconnection, but also uh, giving power on the edge, for instance, to be able to have also uh, very advanced processing um, processing functions and applications uh, at at this level. If we look. Uh, if you look on the recommendation of ITRT, uh, the Internet of Things is more or less associated with infrastructure. Okay? It's, it's uh, infrastructure that it's, it can, uh, which gives the possibility that any time, any place and anything, the ability to communicate. Uh, but what we need also is what to do with this information and uh, try to distribute this, um, let's say, this processing along this, uh, among this, this system. And of course that, of course that um, at the end of the day, uh, these systems will interact with the physical uh, real world. And that's where any cyber physical system enters into uh, its, uh, its, uh, major, uh, its, major, uh, its major application. So um, the so the, I, I'm hearing some noise. Okay, so um, the, this cyber physical system uh, will interact. It's meaning that we have an interaction between the cyber part and the physical one, and to have this interaction, we have in one point or several points in the system, the interface between these two worlds, the digital and the analog. So we need uh, very uh, performant, very, uh, very powerful interfaces in order that this uh, functioning of the system in a, in a kind of a feedback loop in some cases to work uh, correctly. Um, so, if we think in the cyber, what we have is uh, local or remote uh, uh, computing. We need communications. We need decisions. We 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 have uh, artificial intelligence also on on this on this part. Uh, but we need also to actuate on the physical part, uh, which. Uh, gives uh, a response which uh, triggers a response from this physical, physical, physical component, uh, which will also, also will be uh, captured and measured and monitored by the sensor. And this is a loop uh, where uh, the hardware and where these uh, interfaces are uh, important. Okay, so in the physical system, we have this orchestration and synergy between computational communications control and physical elements. Of course, that it means that it is multidisciplinary in nature, it's, it's intrinsic 
so there is a lot of know-how and technologies and techniques and, 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 and know-how that needs to be merged. Um, and from our perspective or from my perspective also in, let's say, more low level, uh, there is some technology enablers that uh, will need to be uh, improved and need to be uh, as good as possible, like advanced sensors and actuate, actuators technologies. We need reconfigurable electronics. Uh, we need low power communications and not, so, not only communications, we need optimized energy consumption in all aspects on the, on the system. Uh, and of course, this distributed computing uh, also, namely at the edge, it's one important point that is uh, that uh, we uh, we like to emphasize. So it means that the design strategies now uh, will demand more and more co-design uh, strategies, co-design uh, techniques uh, in order to, um, let's say, to have the best or the more optimal system uh, operation that uh, we need for a, a certain type of application. So it needs that there is an um, intrinsic and there is an embedded uh, co-design approach between hardware and software uh, ever than, uh, nowadays ever than, than, than uh, much more than we uh, faced in the past. So for this massification to be, uh, to be a reality, uh, we think, or I think, that uh, uh, we need low-cost hardware, we need uh, low-cost chips, and we need to miniaturize them as much as possible uh, and to have this chip uh, able to do um, a lot of operations, a lot of functions, a lot of of uh, tasks and, and that's in our perspective this means that we need to evolve or to reinforce because this is not new it's it's coming also from the past the recent past we need to to evolve to kinds of uh, things like system on chip and system in the package designs uh, in order to achieve this uh, massive and low cost uh, uh, in order to have this massification of course Low power is one thing, there is also easy to install and use. And in, it, let's say that the IC designer, it's, it, it's becoming more a solution enabler. Um, in fact, if we think in a CPS, uh, cyber physical system, IoT system, we think about interconnected things uh, and applications, and the examples are limitless. Uh, if we think in a simplified layer structure, uh, there is many things that we can uh, say uh, all uh, about these three, let's say, simplified layers, these three layers that I show here, and the cloud level, in the networking level, uh, depending on the type of communications that we use, from ranging from 5G, Wi-Fi, etc. And we have this hardware level, uh, we call it uh, nodes. Uh, and even there in these nodes, we need uh, to be uh, to follow a modular approach in order to have flexibility in the design, to have flexibility on terms of the type of connectivity that we want to use. Uh, also, this reconfigurability to be as flexible as possible through what we call your software defined hardware or or uh, operation-defined uh, hardware. Uh, and what this leads to, to, to edge computing. Uh, and so let's focus on this, this part, this node where it's more close to this hardware, the hardware part. So uh, in a CPS IoT node, probably the IoT node is very similar to this one. Well, let's say the original one, but the CPS, uh, for me, the, the big difference from, from the IoT, the, 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 the first generation mm -hmm. IoT nodes, is that the CPS has more processing power uh, in it. 
uh, not only through uh, more uh, powerful uh, microcontrollers, but also from uh, by introducing mm. uh, low power, uh, for instance, uh, neural networks and machine learning processors or accelerators in in these in these small modes. Um, so. If we look in the in the structure of this, uh, if we look in the structure of this, uh, okay. So if we look in the in the structure of this node, uh, we check that we have clearly the interface between the analog and the digital part. So. One of the blocks more important is this, these ones. It's the ADCs and the DACs. And the ADCs and the DACs design have been, they are been uh, evolu evaluating, uh, evoluting in, in terms of uh, to reach the best performance for each application, of course, but the best performance as possible. Um, the digital part, I will come to, to the other part. Uh, the digital part, uh, it's now including more and more uh, more powerful and micro microcontrollers, including even uh, neural networks uh, processors, uh, dedicated processors. And it's not only software; it's dedicated hardware, dedicated processors, um, efficient memory, uh, low power, for instance, low leakage uh, due to power consumption uh, memory, and of course. Um, more and more to be able to support not only but uh, two or three are multi-standard uh, in terms of communications ranging from uh, short range uh, standards like uh, Bluetooth low energy or uh, or ant technologies or and standards or long range like 4G or 5G or ultra narrowband like LoRa or uh, Zigfox whatever um, and this part of the system is mainly in terms of uh, semiconductor is mainly dominated by CMOS technology because it's cheaper uh, and it's, it's dominant. It's 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 digital and it's dominant. This the of course that the digital part uh, must contact to to interface with the analog part and of course these analog to digital converters are also done also in CMOS technology. Uh, and, but the sensors part, it's probably not the best technology CMOS. And that's why we need uh, to be able to uh, integrate other technologies in these, uh, in these systems, in these uh, micro systems, let's say. So uh, we have here a terigenous um, type of integration. So, uh, choosing the best technology for each application or for each function, it's, I uh, we think, the right way to, to go for it. Um, and there is also one thing that is very important and on this note to, to end this, let's say, brief overview of this uh, block diagram. It's what we call here power management and energy uh, Probably it's more power and energy management. It's not only power management, but energy management is also very important. How to, to store energy, how to, uh, how to optimize the, the energy consumptions and etc. So it means energy management. And of course, associated with this is harvesting because usually these nodes need to be in many applications to be able to connect, to operate uh, with the minimum number of uh, charging uh, cycles or charging necessity, uh, or at least, or in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a operation, autonomous operation, for instance. Okay, you now it's work. So for so far a successful uh, CPS, we think that we need uh, hardware programmability, flexibility and uh, adaptability, heterogeneous integration. Uh, we, we need to design for energy efficiency. Uh, we need efficient data storage. Of course, the same thing for communications and uh, uh, we need intelligent edge nodes, which means that we need uh, extra power, but 
with no uh, much extra energy. So it's it's a this is a challenging uh, a challenging task because the high power uh, will be and continue to uh, to be available on the cloud and on the data centers, etc. But uh, what we are meaning intelligent is uh, by uh, the processing that is possible to do on the edge should be done on the edge in order to, uh, let's say, for instance, reduce the, the quantity of data that is transmitted for uh, central, uh, central applications. Uh, of course, uh, one aspect is very important is security. I will not talk too much about that. Uh, form factor is one also a last thing. It's, it should be uh, adaptable to the application, physical application that it's uh, intended to, uh, and cost, uh, it's always a major concern. So we need, uh, in terms of semiconductor uh, industry, we need ICs with more processing capacity, and but be more efficient. So uh, evolving this IoT, the big, let's say the first conclusion is the evolving this IoT into, to these uh, cyber physical systems depends greatly on the availability of I, what I call it high performance ICs, uh, covering all domains from sensor interfaces, digital processing, energy harvesting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the focus, as I said uh, at the beginning, it's on the chip, uh, chip design. Okay, so just uh, uh, just a, just a brief overview of uh, let's say the dominant technology in semiconductor. It's CMOS. It's it is uh, more than ninety nine percent of uh, all the transistors done uh, chips is done in 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 using this technology. Uh, there is several reasons for that. One of them is uh, cost. Uh, but the, the thing that I would like to emphasize is the scaling down of the technology. This, this has been very, this has been uh, observed during the last two or three decades. So uh, the transistor is getting smaller and smaller. It means that we can put more and more uh, these active devices in the ship, which means we can have more processing, let's say, in, in theory, more processing power. Uh, we are reaching now a level of uh, five nanometers technologies at, at this moment. And I will uh, I'll show you in a brief and in the next slides, uh, one example of how many transistors as in one, uh, in one chip. Um, so, uh, as I said, one of the consequences is the increase of number of active devices in the ship. So it means more and more powerful, uh, powerful, uh, powerful processors. Uh, but what is interesting to see is that um, despite of these, uh, let's say these uh, downscaling technologies, uh, the frequency, the clock, let's say, like the clock frequency is uh, at, at a certain point, it has not uh, go upper. And there is reasons for that. And one, probably the most important one is the power. It's the dynamic power, which is, uh, let's say, directly related with the frequency of the clock. So. And dissip the dissipation of energy or the dissipation, the thermal dissipation mm -hmm. uh, in the chip is a complex task. And uh, in fact, uh, the, this clock has not uh, evolved as the number of, uh, of uh, the density of the, the number of total transistors that we can uh, integrate in the ship. So what is interesting, uh, the Th th that does not mean that the computational capacity has not increased. And what is interesting here is that uh, the solution that the industry and the, acad uh, the, the academy uh, uh, have, uh, have, uh, have, um, have evolved uh, is to have parallelized uh, type of operations. So uh, more cores or one of uh, the last, the, the, let's say, the, the trends that we are facing now, not only uh, generic processing cores, but also dedicated cores for certain types of applications or certain types of operations. So uh, in, despite that the individual clock is not increasing, the system as a whole 
uh, is uh, the computational uh, capacity is increasing a lot because of this uh, parallelization uh, st strategy that has been uh, addressed. Uh, this is one example, one of the last uh, big, uh, let's say, big uh, CPUs, uh, it's uh, the M1, which has 16, 16 billion of transistors, it's done in 5 nanometers process technology. But what I would like also to address or to emphasize is that besides that, there is this uh, cores, of course, uh, CPU cores, but GPUs, Neur neural uh, processors, neural network processors inside, uh, inside the same sheet. So, and the same strategy, what is interesting is that the same strategy for this, let's say, um, high performance uh, server based or computer based CPUs, it's also been transposed for uh, microcontrollers and uh, solutions, ASICs for the end nodes. The same strategy. So CPUs, parallelization, uh, accelerators, uh, dedicated processors. So the same strategy is also being applied on the edge. So it, this is the result of uh, the, 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 this is the result, let's say, from the semiconductor evolution. It's in one part, uh, it's, only shrinking the technology. This is good for digital processing, digital processing. Uh, but also we need more than that. Uh, and this, we need some diversification and we need to integrate uh, in the same packages, in the same ship, uh, all of these functions. And that's where appear what we call this system on chip and system on in the package uh, uh, solutions. And this is, I think, the key uh, of the success of, uh, and uh, it, it is, and it will be the success of the cyber physics. It's uh, to have available this type of, uh, of uh, systems or uh, of, of options. Uh, this is just an overview of what, what is a SIP, a system in a package. Uh, so we have several SHIP dies in the same package, and then, then we encapsulate, and that's it. Um, we can have planar structures or 3D structures, whatever. So there is a lot of, uh, of, uh, of solutions on that. And one is interesting in this SIP approach is that we can, um, we can join different uh, chips, chip and device from different technologies. Uh, or even, even if we use CMOS technology from different nodes. Uh, we can go even further. So instead of using, uh, of sharing also only the same packaging, but also we can share the same uh, substrate. So we can have even uh, high um, density or high even density in terms of uh, integration of different chips or different technology in the same, in the same, in the same chip. So this type of integration is even more, uh, can give us even more um, improvements on terms of sizing uh, than, than the, 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 the last one. Uh, this is also an example. This is an example from uh, Michigan University. Uh, from, this is um, uh, a, a node that was used for uh, application to monitorize and uh, the behavior of some uh, small insects. And so uh, they needed to be very, very small. And what, do you, what is interesting, you see, we see all, we see all the, the blocks. Uh, from this IoT node architectures that I, I, I tried to show. So we have uh, SIP, so we have several technology uh, connected to each other with these wire bonds. Uh, we have communication, radio, battery, energy management. We have microprocessor and or microcontroller and memory uh, and, the, uh, and the sensor. So, so in the very small, uh, very small, uh, very small, um, a very small package, or like small, small, small from factor, uh, we have here a solution that is able to 
uh, transmit the information that uh, for a for a central point uh, for um, what is happening for this end sector the, the, and the sensors uh, capture the the signals that uh, they wanted. Uh, so one of the technologies that I think it's the most uh, interesting ones is these microelectromechanical systems, which basically is uh, it's trying to um, to do at the micro uh, micrometer level uh, what we do in a, let's say macro micro environment. So try to to at this at this level of of, uh, of uh, integration to implement the sensor. So. A lot of sensors are using these type of technologies. Uh, for instance, just to, to mention one, one of the big tech, tech in, in companies that lead, is one of the big leaders of accelerometers, for instance, uh, Bosch uh, used this type of technology, for instance, for uh, doing accelerometers. In fact, these, uh, these examples here are, um, are for, uh, for, uh, for these type of applications. And the advantages of that is that it means that in a small size, we can integrate several sensors. And also uh, from the perspective of, uh, um, of uh, adding, adding new technologies like carbon nanotubes, et cetera, and, and things like that. Well, so for interfacing with these MEMS on all this, uh, we need to have uh, analog front ends are, that are flexible and are let's say, uh, capable to acquire the signal. And the example I show you uh, next, uh, it's, uh, what, uh, it's a, a commercial one, it's from Cypress. By the way, it's now Infineon. Uh, Cypress has, was bought by, by Infineon. Um, it's a programmable SOC and the PSOC, that's the name. Uh, and the, the, the name, gives a good idea what it does. It's a programmable SOC, but not only it's, it's capable to, uh, to uh, program the digital part in terms of software, but it also, also can be uh, programmed in terms of uh, digital hardware, like a, let's say uh, kind of uh, FPGA. But what is interesting is that also it can be, we can program the analog part like a FPEA. So it's a, a field programmable analog uh, uh, and in fact, uh, all of these blocks are available here. So we have the digital part, which can be programmed, uh, the CPU, in this case, ARM Cortex with the RAM. And we have here the analog system that has uh, ADCs that can be reconfigurable. So we can change the resolution. We can change the frequency of uh, the uh, sampling frequency. We can, uh, we can, we can, we have access to filters. We can change the frequency response in real time. So this is the concept that we need for these uh, nodes, the intelligent nodes, to be able to, to control and to, uh, uh, to, to reconfigure by software. And of course, that the uh, round here, the, the yellow, the, the yellow box, means that we have a switching matrix, an analog switching matrix, that means that we can route the signal from, let's say, almost every pin for uh, any of these uh, blocks inside. So it, it's a very flexible uh, platform or a cheap uh, PSOC uh, for that. I think it fulfills uh, the requirements for this cyber physical uh, behavior. Of course, that we can also uh, implement uh, what we call this system on chip. So instead of system in, in package, we can integrate all the system inside the chip. Um, and once again, all the blocks, all the functions are the same. The scaling is different because now we are putting everything inside. And uh, as we see, we have also this analog front end, the ADC, uh, we have the digital accelerators. So, for instance, uh, if we want to do an FFT for uh, this, this is case for, for this is a case that was applied for, for instance, acquiring um, uh, biosignals, so SEG signals, for instance. Uh, and so, instead of doing the FFT on software, we can 
uh, using this, uh, these accelerators to uh, speed up the process and probably not only speed up also, but it's much more energy efficient when compared with the same function uh, uh, done in software. Of course, that it also has uh, MSP for 3.0 or open MSP for 3.0 uh, inside for, to, con to control the node. Um, the radio part for guaranteeing the communication and the power management unit and uh, energy and power management unit. This unit only uh, is able to work without battery uh, using a thermal electrical generators or small spark panels on part. And it only occupies in a 130 nanometers technology, three, let's say four by four millimeters. It's less than that, but it's uh, roughly, so it's, it's very compact as, as we can uh, see. Uh, so, uh, but the technology, CMOS technology pose some problems. Of course, that having the transistor more short, it can reach very much, uh, much higher frequencies of operation. That's very, very good for that. But uh, due to, to some reasons uh, connected to this power, uh, power dissipation, for instance, in CPUs, the supply voltage is decreasing. And this is bad for analogs or in, for the interfaces. It's not very good. And also it's the obtaining gain from these, from these devices is a little bit more difficult. So as a consequence, it's more difficult to do this interface. It's good for us. It's good for uh, research. It's good for, for innovation. That's uh, good for that. So we need new designs, paradigms uh, for needed, uh, are needed in order to, have, to achieve this. On, on this. Just to give just one example, there is much more. For instance, uh, this is an example of a change in paradigm is to have using a capacitor to have amplification. That's a change in, 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 in paradigm. And so we change the value of the capacitance in terms of uh, dynamically. And then we obtain, if we maintain the charge, we obtain a difference uh, and gain. So that's an, only an example of what the implications on achieving a cyber physical system with, let's say, less power, et cetera, it also implies changes on low level design. Um, as I said, I will not enter into detail with other, other points. I will just show you some graphics. Uh, I will not also enter it. Just give some really, really, really simple ideas about three fundamental blocks that, uh, and try to see the evolution in terms of design, uh, not only in research, academia, but also in industry, about ADCs, for instance. And, um, what is, we see here, uh, it's, uh, let's say, the, the power, um, uh, the energy that it's, that it's uh, uh, the energy that it's spent for conver conversion step. Um, and and what, this is more or less limits, okay? So it's physical limits and it's very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to bypass this. And what is what we are checking? By the way, these uh, blue blue blocks and these uh, uh, marron uh, ones, uh, uh, brown, um, are uh, publications from this year. So it's it's the top one, and it's the publication on the major conferences uh, on on the field. So what we are checking is that the evolution of the designs of the ADCs are reaching more and more the limit. So it's, they are more and more as efficient as possible. So this is a, a dramatic, this is a dramatic evolution in terms of what the designers and the, the scientific community uh, uh, is able to, to push. So we are pushing uh, as much as possible uh, these, these points. Also here, it's, it, the, the aperture is related with the, the, the frequency uh, of the of the ADCs that are being achieved, of course, that if we have high resolution, many bits, uh, it's more difficult to have high frequency uh, free, uh, sampling frequency, and if we want to have, um, uh, let's say, more more uh, frequency, uh, sampling frequency, then the resolution uh, it's uh, is getting lower. So it, that's a consequence of of that. Um, 
Uh, also, just one point here is that uh, there is some figure of merit from the ADC, but just to show what is the spectacle in terms of what is the humankind is, is able to do when when he's trying to reach. So uh, this form from, from Shai, it's a figure of merit. Uh, it, there is a, a theoretical, let's say, a, a boundary, a limit, an upper limit that is very difficult to enterprise. It's a more or less, let's say, 190. So what we are checking is that the designs are getting more and more and more close to this point. So uh, ADC is getting as efficient as they can. So probably we need to change some paradigm after, after that. But let's see what, what happened. Uh, this is a one kind of uh, type of sigma delta ADC. So uh, just to say that once again, uh, the designs are reaching the limits, the, the, the limits that is possible to, to it. So it's uh, very, uh, we are getting very efficient ADCs. Uh, also in one point here that I also, also like to, to point out is uh, in the communication part, the, for instance, the power amplifiers, for uh, emitting, so uh, for instance, for the, these wireless links. Uh, here is what we need heterogeneous, heterogeneous integration because in blues we have CMOS and CMOS does not, uh, is not able to reach, let's say, powers upper than uh, a certain value. So we need to uh, integrate others, uh, other technology. So heterogeneous integration, probably in a C. Um, this is the DC-DC converter, which is related with the power management units, and we are reaching really nice efficient slice, like 85%, 90%, 80%. So uh, also here, a good work is being done. Okay, so uh, just to give uh, an example of uh, CPS, uh, I will, I'll try not to give too much details, but it's an example of uh, that what I, after I realized Probably during the, 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 the project, probably it was not clear that you, it was a, a cyber physical system, but, but I think at the end, yes, it, it is a cyber physical, but it does all these components uh, involved that I tried to, to mention. Uh, so the idea here was to uh, implement a clever, uh, a clever system, uh, low cost, as much as possible to um, water monitoring in a water distribution uh, company. Uh, on the huge network, uh, low pressure network uh, that in this case, Smash has. Uh, so that's why in order to, to massify it, we need to lower the cost uh, and try to uh, measure some of the, uh, some, some parameters of the water to, in order to have, uh, monitoring uh, quality, etc. So uh, we need energy autonomous. We need multi-sensor uh, capability. It needs to be reliable and maintenance almost free. So we don't we don't want to have everyone to to go every week to to change the battery. Low cost, uh, optimize the radio communication at, at smart algorithms and in full integration smartly with, uh, with uh, for instance, SCADA system. In terms of uh, building blocks, it's the same as the same uh, multi technology integration, uh, analog front end, computation, uh, wireless, of course, center, which we perform the most uh, powerful or more or more computa computational heavy operations, but of course also uh, energy harvesting and we collect uh, energy everything from the flow of water uh, on the pipes. Um, what type of sensors? Uh, MEMS technology combined with carbon nanotube sensors in a small package, I'll show you uh, as, as, as some pictures in order to be able to monitorize or to capture values from uh, physical parameters like uh, pressure or uh, temperature or, uh, or, or and chemical ones like uh, uh, nitrate or uh, chloride, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so this is the aspect of the sensorship. 
Uh, it's done using MEMS technology, incorporating uh, these. It's uh, one by one. I will just de de detail uh, the the view. So this is the view of the probe. Uh, we have here the censorship, uh, first generation and the second generation. The difference is that the second one has much more a number uh, uh, much more uh, higher the sensors than the previous one. Okay, uh, and here. We have the sensor, the CMOS chip that interfaces with this uh, sensor uh, sensor chip. Uh, a just overview of this sensor chip. So we have a pressure. So it's a it's a it's a pressure sensor. Conductivity, temperature. The CMTs are it's nine in this case, twenty five in the second one, which uh, is able to uh, to monitorize or uh, to acquire uh, chemical ones and the flow, of course. Um, from uh, the analog front end point of view, uh, we have direct connections with these sensors, uh, and of course, uh, to the remaining part of the FI in this version. Uh, it's made with uh, commercial ICs to be able to communicate via LoRa and to um, and to to, um, to make some management in terms of um, energy and in terms of energy. Okay, the the second chip, um, the second chip that uh, was done, just to uh, give uh, just uh, uh, the same overview of of the previous ones. So we have. A matrix, analog matrix that is able to switch the by software which, like say which uh, which sensor is 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 being is being used. Um, integrating this, we need to act to these sensors. That's why we need a, a DAC. So we have this loop, okay, physical uh, interface digital and again uh, physical so we have here the complete operation of, uh, of 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 this physical system locally uh this this is a huge chip it's a five by five and the it, it also integrates this pmu which uh, it was able to 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 do a 16 me, uh, 16 milliwatts of energy uh, of, of of power let's say sorry um milliwatts of power uh, integrating uh, open MSP430 for uh, microcontrol and the analog front ends as several channels in order to, to be able to, to work in parallel, for instance. Okay, so I think that I will try to pass here very, very quickly because I think I'm running out of time. Uh, so just over some of the blocks, the ADC, the programmable uh, filter, uh, the, the reason for that, I will not explain the circuits, not the objective here, is that because um, even the process of designing these ships uh, has to be uh, was changed. So, for instance, for years, a uh, genetic algorithm was used in order to optimize for a certain uh, level of of uh, supply voltage. In this case, a sub one volt, a zero nine nine volt. Uh, in order to to achieve the best result in terms of uh, of functionality of this filter, um, this is the DC DC converter. Also, the same types of approach has been uh, has been applied, uh, also reaching higher than eighty percent uh, in this case. Uh, for the energy harvesting, also um, I will try to skip this as fast as possible. Uh, so we have uh, uh, we or the project has designed a new type of turbine in order to be able to work with very low flow rate uh, flow rate in, in, in under the pipes, and of course that this is not not enough. So we need uh, efficient, smart energy power management. So we need to sense and to actuate uh, in the physical uh, type. So uh, this is a mix on this on these two, two parts. Uh, smart operation, on node and on cloud prediction capabilities, neural networks all in cloud. So one of the aspects that is missing is to transpose also some neural network uh, capacity for the for the node. And uh, several problems were uh, tried. We tried to solve or the, the project tried to solve 
by this uh, by this uh, by this smartness. So, for instance, um, we don't need that the node be able to measure every parameters every time. So, probably it only needs to measure the conductivity, and based on the conductivity and based on the model, the training model and the coefficients that it receives from the the central point. Uh, then uh, I can uh, estimate if everything is okay or it needs to wake up the rest of the node. And then that's one example of that. Uh, water quality, uh, water leakage detection on that. Okay, uh, this is just some pictures of the installation. Um, okay, so another, uh, I'll just, uh, it's missing three, three slides or something like that. Um, uh, other other type of, uh, of of applications, very recent ones. This is one I, I found it very very interesting. Uh, it's a, a smart microphone, uh, which uh, is able to uh, running um, with a small battery uh, uh, watch battery uh, type of, of battery, um, and for that. Uh, what it does is, it, is it, it, when it's in, in, let's say, in a, it's not sleeping mode, but it's low power mode, uh, only this uh, part is working. And what it's trying to do is to um, catch some signatures, that uh, signatures, other signatures, in order to identify that, okay, this signature is. Um, is human is uh, is corresponding to human, so it, it means that we need to wake up and then process more uh, precisely. And this signature recognition and learning is done in a mesh uh, in a net neural network and a processor inside this this uh, this chip uh, in order to to achieve this. And really, the 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 level of uh, power that uh, is able to achieve is completely completely uh, completely very very low so it's 0 0.142 microwatts mm -hmm. of operation it's one again uh, it's the advantage of, of having this sock design uh, in this case in a sip packaging because it integrates a mems microphone and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 this chip so once again uh, this integration and using extra um, processing power uh, but low power, so uh, low power processing uh, is able to do very, very interesting. Of course, for when uh, when the node is uh, wake up and it processes the the command that is the person is given or etc. Of course, it sends this, it streams this audio for a more advanced or more uh, computational uh, capable um, a capable um, a processor in the in the in the network in order to process the the, the audio signal. Okay, uh, just one word, uh, just one word on this cyber physical system on chip. I found this a very interesting idea is 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 to push the concept of cyber physical sim in in for the uh, operation of the CPU or the, the the processor itself. It's very very interesting idea. It's very interesting. So we have the same concepts but locally in order to do what in order to try to predict uh, the age, aging effects of uh, processors, uh, thermal effects of the process in, and try to correct that uh, more or less even, even in, in real time. So there is a mix on uh, virtual sensors and uh, physical sensors like, uh, like a temperature sensor or, or oxide thickness sensor, et cetera, uh, on, the, on, the, the, on this, um, cyber physical system on chip uh, point. This is a, a view of uh, these virtual sensors and physical sensor in what level. For instance, very, very interesting to see uh, that at circuit level, circuit delay, temperature, ox oxide breakdown, but this virtual sensor for instance, at, at the level of the operating system, the system utilization, the, the peripheral states, etc., which uh, then feeds this uh, cyber physical locally, and then it reacts, it, it actuates, it changes the clock, it, it changes the voltage, it changes. So um, this is a concept very, very, very interesting. I found it really very interesting for future, uh, for future, uh, for future on. And um, okay, so uh, as a conclusion, I think I have already spent too much time. 
So I'm really sorry, uh, but the team, the, the topics really, really, really interesting. Um, so we see the CPS from IC perspective. Um, CMOS is well established, but we need to integrate the other ones. Uh, and uh, ultra low power will nano networks are really also a trend in the, in the now and the future to include, to be included in the edge, these edge devices in order to improve processing and sensing data. And for these neural networks, we need to have what we need, uh, what we called um, uh, computing in memory type of approach. It's, uh, the memory is not only a storage, but also in integrate some operation like adding and multiply, so multiply and accumulate functions, which can be done anal in analog domain. It's a very interesting point. So uh, I think I'm I'm finished. I'm sorry for the for the delay, but uh, as I said, the topic is very very interesting. Okay, so I will take it from here. So thank you very much, Juan Pedro, for your interesting presentation. I open now the discussion floor. So we have approximately like thirty minutes to do so. So I kindly ask you to open your cameras now for the Q&A part and please raise your virtual hand if you want to ask a question. So do we have anything on the Come on guys, don't be shy. I particularly have several questions, but since I'm, I'm sharing the session, so I will leave, I will leave mine for, for last. Okay, it seems not. So I will start with mine. Maybe I will inspire some of the questions. Okay, okay. Um, Okay, so if you, if you have to summarize um, your presentation um, and to identify one major challenge uh, to, to be overcome for the evolution of these systems, where would you put your finger on? Of course, I, I will not talk about the upper layers because um, previous presentations were very clear, clear on that field. So I just addressed the lower layers, so the, the hardware layers. So, from my point of view, we need to have chips and uh, better chips and more powerful chips. I think that's 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 the ma major issue here, and um, and we need to integrate, uh, let's say, more um, intelligent functions in these chips. And these intelligent functions need to be very efficient in terms of energy. Of course, cost is also a point here, but energy is is also uh, for me it's very important for for that. So I will say. Uh, semiconductor, and we see what is happening. Semiconductor uh, with these pandemics, it's, it's really uh, it's uh, it's getting a very serious uh, serious problem, uh, especially when we see this uh, this relation between uh, Occident and uh, Orient. Um, so I think, uh, in terms of hardware, is this uh, uh, conjunction of systems on chips and system in a package uh, very to, to make these as affordable as possible and uh, try to, let's say, to, to bring this because it seems to be a complex and it, it costs money to design it, but we need to approach this, uh, to, uh, to try to approach or to approximate these designs for the, let's say, the common, uh, common engineer, system designer engineer in order to, to be able, more effective. One point here is that if we have this uh, reconfigurable hardware, uh, then it's, 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 it's easier. For instance, let me just, uh, in order, in order to, to also to explain that. For instance, the, one of the last generation of uh, FPGA from Xilinx, the RFSOC, it's, it's, it's not only a FPGA, it's, it's FPGA plus very high performant ADCs and DACs. It means that we can do almost everything with that. So up to, let's say, two gigahertz or three gigahertz. So with that platform, we can do uh, a radio, we can do, so um, also this type of reconfigurability chips helps us to design uh, systems that are 
uh, clever uh, for uh, for accomplishing this task that we want for the certain applications. Yeah. At the same time, these this systems also generate a pile of data that yeah. companies nowadays have. Uh, it's yeah. a challenge to, to deal with yeah. all the yeah, data yeah. that is being yeah. generated by the systems. Yeah, one, one of the problems, yeah, that, that's right. It's generated data from the node to the central part. So mm -hmm. it, it, re it really means a problem here. Uh, we, need to, uh, we need to be clever sending data. Uh, so we didn't, probably don't need to send all the data. Uh, so, but exactly. we need some edge. But also what is interesting is that even locally, we have problems now. For instance, the data that is exchanged between the processor and the memory. Uh, nowadays, uh, if we, uh, the, the, the huge, it, it, it consumes energy and it, it, it takes time, even, even in a small scale. So that's why these um, new, let's say, not new probably, let's call it new generation of memories, computing in memories, and well, where uh, we memorize the data, but also we do some calculations, but using analog, for instance, for, uh, for doing the, the, the operation adding. So it's very easy. It's, it's adding currents in the, in the node or, um, or, uh, or, or multiplying. So some of the functions, and that can be done, of course, that you need some A to D and D, and D to I, so the analog to digital and the digital converses in, in, in these roles. To perform these uh, also this uh, to help to these operations, but it means that um, with this type of strategy, it um, instead of trans like a von Neumann uh, arch type of architecture, in instead of transferring data raw uh, from the processor and the memory and so forth, mm -hmm. probably uh, you will ask something and will receive not the raw data but already the data already with some uh, operational operation performed. Which more at, more at knowledge level instead of data. Yeah, yeah. data more on the knowledge yeah. side yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, because we have limited bandwidth, even in a short uh, in a ship to ship communication. So uh, these new paradigms will come up more and more and more as the multi processor and multi cores and multi accelerators uh, type of approach. It's get is given. Uh, let's. We see the M1 is one example of that. M1 is one example of that. I think we're losing your job. Yes, yes. Hello? Hello? Yes. From hello. Pedro? Yes. So, okay. 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 Questions, please? AI? Luis, yes, yes. Please. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, João Pedro, for a very nice uh, presentation. Thank you. With the uh, figures, very updated figures in some aspects. <laughs> and uh, there's also some uh, keywords that are close to to my 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 areas, let's say, of uh, navigation. And uh, one of those is uh, co-design. However. I think that uh, uh, when you mean when you say co-design, you are mostly considering electrical mechanical integration for system on package and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, not so much uh, related with the, uh, other co-design, let's say the software hardware uh, co-design. Uh, of course, that uh, uh, for the whole thing, uh, most of the time, it's necessary to consider the co-design of hardware, software, and mechanical. Exactly. Uh, so the, the uh, could could you let's say comment on the availability of tools to integrate uh, those uh, uh, techniques for uh, co-design of electrical and mechanical or even hardware, software, and mechanical parts? Um, yes, I'm 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 on 200% agree with you. Um, yeah. When I say co-design, uh, I should also say with software. It's it's very important because uh, it's more and more difficult to distinguish uh, when uh, the level of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of embedding uh, one of them. Um, what I see, at least at least from what I see from the from the softwares, the design softwares from um, 
I see, uh, for, for what I know, uh, is that it's more and more, uh, we have available tools, not, not cheap, they are very expensive, more and more that are able to do this, uh, let's say, um, let's say, uh, uh, mechanical sim simulations uh, in order to uh, to generate the models that are able to uh, simulate and to uh, to design with uh, and by using this simulation to co-design with this this uh, this uh, this function. Yes, so. I, uh, my, my, my perspective is yes, the softwares will evolve for that. There is already some, uh, some, uh, some tools available on that. For instance, if I think in, in guidance or on IDS or, or whatever, uh, that is uh, we, uh, and MEMS uh, from certain types of MEMS uh, that are able to simulate, extract the model, electrical model or equivalent model, and then using it as a, as a, a model, a macro model for, and, and then using, using it for de designing the, the circuit and uh, the circuit for, for, this, uh, for, for, for this optimization, let's say, uh, achieved with this co-design. But of course, the, the, uh, for, for instance, there is one, one aspect that is, for the, the software that I see, we have roughly uh, in Proteus in some parts, more or less, but uh, when we did some, let's say, co-design of software. So when, for instance, when this deciding that, okay, we need to do this FFT. So instead of doing in software, we do this function in, uh, in the direct synthesis in, uh, in, uh, using logic guides uh, in the ship. So this is a kind of co-designing. So, okay, we need to have this function several times. We need this function to be uh, as uh, efficient as possible in terms of energy. Then instead of using, uh, implemented it in software, we implemented it in, in hardware. Uh, in hardware, and then we call it, uh, we do a kind of a driver or whatever, a function call, and we receive that. But yes, I'm, I'm agree with you that co-designing should include all these uh, all these layers or aspects or or, uh, or points. More questions, please. Okay, so if we don't have further questions, I would suggest that we close today's session. So, and we thank again Professor João Pedro Oliveira for this perspective on this very important topic, very current topic. I think it was very interesting. And thank you. Uh, I think Professor João Pedro Oliveira will be available for answering your, your questions also. Yes, yes. Offline yes. by email. So, please yes. do so. And I uh, also like this, uh, I discovered this recently, this cyber physical system chip. I found it a uh, topic very interesting, really. It is, it is, yeah. Yes, it's a very interesting topic. I, okay. <laughs> I think it's an interesting one. So, thank you everybody for your presence here today. So I, I don't know if Professor Camarino wants to, to add anything else regarding next sessions. Yes. So. First of all, thank you very much, Ron Pedro and Rui, for this very interesting session. I am very far away from these topics, but I could learn some interesting things. So it was, even for me, that I'm not at all in this area, it was very interesting. So thank you for your presentation. Uh, and now I'd like just to remind all of you that uh, this month uh, we have uh, presentations with a different schedule. Uh, so the next one will be on the 13th of July, that is a Tuesday, so more or less one and a half weeks from now. Uh, the, the topic will be about graph theory and collaborative networks, and the, the presentation will be made by Antonio Abreu from the Polytechnic Institute of Lisbon, that is here, attending also this session. Um, so you are all welcome to the next session. That will be the number 10 in our sequence. So thank you very much.
for attending the session and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.